Good, ev good evening, everybody. Um, we'd like to call the, the Wednesday, February 20th Town Council meeting to order. Um, with that, we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. With that, roll call. Nope. <laughs> Councilor Baybine? Present. Councilor Johnson? Here. Councilor Foley? Here. Councilor Katarina? Here. Councilor Hamill? Here. Chairman Hayes? Here. Good evening. At this point, item four on the agenda is general public comments. If anybody has any public comments for any items that aren't an agenda item, are welcome to come up to the podium if they'd like. Um, doesn't look like we have any takers tonight, so we'll close public comment. Um, the next item is the approval of the minutes for February 6, 2019. Uh, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any discussion, comments, or changes? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. I don't believe there are any adjustments to the agenda this evening. Items to be signed, I have done. So the first order of business is order number 19003, a public hearing on the proposed amend amendments to chapter 405, the zoning ordinance of the town of Scarborough section, I won't even attempt the Roman numerals, Hagas Parkway District and schedule a second reading. And I think Jay is here to introduce it and bring us up to speed. <coughs> Good evening and thank you. Um, Yes, as you said, this is for a public hearing. This item was before the council maybe a month or so ago for first reading. And then within the last few weeks, it did go to planning board for a public hearing. And so um, they conducted their business on the, on the proposal and had a favorable recommendation back to council. Um, I'm pleased to do another public presentation or just a quick overview of what the uh, materials are and then if there's questions, I'll, we can dig into the details. So, um, so by way of background, uh, the Long Range, this is a proposal actually coming to you from the Long Range Planning Committee who has reviewed the existing provisions of the Highest Parkway District, which regulate how the ratio of residential activity is determined in relation to the commercial activity. Um, Basically, as the way the rules are currently written, um, certain residential uses are permitted, uh, predominantly multifamily type development, provided that um, uh, through, uh, I'll start with by saying, uh, through a plan development review process. So this is sort of a, a multi-step elevated review process by the planning board. But residential uh, uses are only allowed um, to be a maximum of 40% of the total floor area within the zone. When the planning board first uh, tried to implement this, or did implement this uh, ordinance with a proposal that came before them through the plan development process, they realized that the language, the current language, doesn't really give them great guidance, them and the applicant, and staff for that matter, that we're probably lowest on that totem pole. <laughs> um, great guidance as to how to, how to determine uh, the 40 percent, particularly where you have a phased development where um, commercial and residential might happen at different times. So the proposed language you have before you and has been posted um, really seeks to provide that guidance. Um, as I said, the Long Range Planning Committee spent um, quite a bit of time on this and the planning board has reviewed it as well and um, think the language is workable and so we, we shall see as they say, but we do believe we have a, a better approach than we've had in the past. So with that, does Happy anybody, to answer questions. Yeah, does anybody have any questions for Jay? With that, um, open it up to any public comment for anybody that wants to comment on the proposal. Seeing none, I guess that, that closes that item. The next item is 19006, a public hearing on the proposed amendment to Chapter 901, the Town of Scarborough Garbage and Recycling Collection and Disposal Ordinance, Article 1, Section 1002. And I believe Tom yes. um, will give us just an update on that. Sure. Also. This matter came through the Ordinance Committee. Perhaps members uh, are interested in speaking, but I'll just introduce the matter if I could. Uh, this actually started from uh, the Public Works Director, and it achieves two basic things. One, it adds some clarity around yard waste or wood wastes um, uh, at, the, at the 
curb, if you will, or on the street. Apparently, that uh, can be a problem with folks piling up uh, materials on the, on the paved surface. And secondarily, it clarifies that the recycling and trash containers must be removed um, within 24 hours of collection. Apparently, uh, and perhaps you've seen this as you travel to town, there are some folks that choose to leave those out much longer, sometimes uh, all the time. And that can be problematic for plowing activities. And, and so this just adds clarity that uh, we really want them moved off the road as soon as practical after collection. Um, so those are the simple, I think, fairly straightforward amendments to the ordinance. Anybody have any questions for Tom? Is there anybody in the audience that would come up and make public comment on this this item? Seeing none, I'll, I will close the public hearing. Um, the next order of business is order number 19009, an act on the names posted at various committees, boards, as recommended by the Appointments and Negotiation Committee on February 6th. And I think, Council Hamley, if you can update us on that. Yes, this is a uh, uh, second reading for uh, Appointments to several committees, Nick Cloutier to the Board of Assessment Review as first alternate with a term to expire in 2021. Patricia Brigham to the Community Services and Recreational Advisory Board as second alternate with a term to expire in 2020. And uh, Thomas Nolan to uh, the Conservation Commission as a full voting member with a term to expire in 2021. Uh, as well as SEDCO Board appointments, uh, reappointing Andrea Killiard and Kevin Freeman as full voting members for the third and final terms entering, ending 2021, and appointing Travis Kennedy to full voting member ending 2021, and David Martin to full voting member term ending 2020. A motion to approve the recommendations? So moved. Second. Any comments, discussions? All those in favor of the recommendation? It is unanimous. Thank you, Council Hamilton. Um, next new business item is number 18018, first reading on the proposed contract zone request from Patriot Acura dealership located on the corner of Payne, Payne Road and Higgins Parkway. And I think we have some with us tonight. To yes, the applicant is quick. here and uh, his consulting team, I see Jim Seymour is, uh, is at the podium. She'll start. As he gets organized, uh, we thought it was important to, uh, for certainly the purposes of the two new councillors to get a taste of the project, but also for existing councillors, it's been nearly a year since you saw this plan. It has changed uh, based on the input from planning board. So uh, we've asked for a brief overview to orient you to the new plan. Thank you, uh, council members. My name is Jim Seymour, civil engineer with Sebago Technics, representing uh, Patriot Acura this evening. Um, this parcel is located on the corner of Payne and Higus approximately 16 and a half acres. Uh, we met with you back several months ago uh, to look at this for a contract zone. Since that time, we've been working with the planning board, working on resolution of the final site plan. Uh, at the last <coughs> meeting, we did receive uh, preliminary approval. Um, and just to quickly go over some of the details that we've included with the plan uh, since maybe the last time you saw that. Uh, the building itself is right here. Uh, approximately 21,000 square feet of combination of uh, showroom, offices, and uh, uh, service area for the Acura dealership. Most of the inventory and parking will occur in the back, which is important following the design guidelines as expressed in the Scarborough ordinances. And we have some display <coughs> here along the front. Uh, hearing from the planning board, we've included landscaped and retainage of buffers along the front. And you can see here, there's some areas out back, again, listening to the planning board. Those are preservation of existing wetlands. Uh, this project uh, will end up being reviewed by the DEP for stormwater review. The town has delegated uh, uh, site plan uh, review uh, from DEP. Um, primarily, the biggest issues that we were facing were the location of this driveway and the request for a second driveway off Payne. Uh, both of those were uh, approved or consensus from the planning board was to agree with those locations. Uh, there will be some improvements necessary on Hygis as part of the uh, entrance locations as outlined here in this uh, darker color. There will be a little bit of widening of the lanes there and some uh, painting. Um, primarily the stormwater will be uh, handled through a few uh, infiltration areas here and another couple in here. Um, those were all discharged to Willowdale Brook in the rear. 
which just clips the edge of our property and traverses down through the Scarborough Downs property. Um, we're working with both DOT and DEP at this point, but looking for a little more guidance from you this evening uh, as to what you think of our plan. And I know Rick Cheney, the attorney, will go over to you the components of the uh, contract zone agreement itself. Oh, one other feature I'd like to point out is that uh, early on we did hear from both the council and the planning board with inclusion of a nice stone wall. Again, this is the gateway to Scarborough coming off the main turnpike. And I think you can see by some of the renderings that you have in there that we've included area for a nice stone wall to give it an appearance as you come into town. So thank you. And any <coughs> questions, feel free. Does anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. I have just a, a quick question. I don't, and again, you were in front of us a while ago, yes. I mean, many months, if not a year ago. Was there some conversation at one point about in, in some of the space that you had to create walking trails or any of those types of things? That had, that, was that part of the conversation? There was, was some it? conversations. Uh, as you can see, though, um, it seemed to be more of a concern of placing these in conservation areas, and the connectivity uh, would most likely have to occur on the next parcel to come through to get to, I guess, anything from uh, Scarborough Downs to Crossroads. It's just an immense area of wetlands on both sides. So to get those trails to go through those wetlands, you'd be disturbing quite a bit of wetlands. Okay. So it was it was something we did talk about. You did talk about it, but it was but just the configuration felt just doesn't work out. Yeah, because of the stream location and the wetlands, it just seems okay. unfeasible. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any, everybody else have any questions? Um, I think it's okay. Katie. Katie. Well, no, no. I just I, you said Stonewall, and I wanted to see was it a welcome to Scarborough sign, but it looks like it you do incorporate something. Yeah. yeah, and I think the way the planning board felt the way we should leave that was um, that we would show the location of the wall, but the final design may be it to some other committees within Scarborough um, uh, to design the materials and maybe say welcome to Scarborough or just Scarborough, and that the applicant would be uh, reimbursing for the cost, uh, but the final design features could be left up to a future. <laughs> I always ask the boss. By the way, I'm Adam Ahrens, um, Patriot Subaru, uh, Patriot after a, another Patriot Subaru, and a Patriot Nissan mm -hmm. since we last met. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, my name is Rick Cheney. I'm an attorney with uh, Drummond Woodson in Portland, and I represent the applicant. I'm primarily working on the contract zone agreement. I have uh, submitted a letter to you along with updated versions of the contract zone agreement uh, and I hope you had a chance to look at those they go in a lot more detail than I will but <clears throat> just brief overview particularly for the new people um, wh why do we need a contract zone agreement the Higus Parkway district and I think virtually every other district in town with the exception of the BOI district um, prohibit uh, automobile dealerships they do it by the ordinance does it by excluding from outside sales and services uh, automobile dealerships that display automobiles outside, like any typical uh, automobile dealership. So you can't have a car dealership in the, in the HP's district unless it's either the ordinance which was changed, or in this case, um, subject to a contract zone agreement. No different than the Mercedes-Benz dealership on Route 1 and the, the Jaguar Land Rover dealership on Route 1. Both of those um, projects needed contract zone agreements in order to be developed precisely for the same reason that, that we're here. So um, the process has four phases, the contract zone uh, process. Phase one was the preliminary joint meeting that we had back on, I believe, March 7th. We met with you or those of you who were here at the time. Obviously, the new members were not there. Along with the planning board, we went through the project. There was a public hearing conducted by the board. And uh, after discussion and input from Adam and myself and Jim, uh, the council voted unanim unanimously to tell us to go ahead and continue the process. The second phase, as Jim has, has discussed, is planning board process. We've been to the board almost a year now. 
Uh, there were site issues that were unexpected, more time, more cost, but we've gotten through that process. And we now have preliminary approval uh, from the planning board. Third phase back here for the council to ultimately act on the contract zone agreement. Um, there are, and then of course the final, pro the final phase will be hopefully final planning board approval and the project will go ahead. There are essentially four things that you need to find in order to approve any contract zone agreement. You first have to determine that it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan we're talking about, of course, is the 2006 plan, which is still in force, not the one that um, a number of us are working on um, that has not yet come to you and has not yet been adopted. You have to find that it's consistent with the permitted and actual uses within the zone. Uh, you need to find that the project is in the public interest, and you need to find that it will have beneficial effects on the town if it, uh, that wouldn't occur if it weren't developed by this developer in this, fa in this fashion. So I've summarized in my letter uh, the, the uh, types of uses and the overall vision for Haggis Parkway that the 2006 comp plan envisioned. And I think it's fair to say that Haggis Parkway has not developed quite as we had all hoped. Mm -hmm. um, but it has developed, and it's developed in, in a business <coughs> retail type fashion. Um, across the street, Cabela's was at the time it was approved uh, in the Haggis Parkway. That was a contract zone agreement. I represented that developer, and the, the issue there was size of the building. Um, since that time, all the land on the, I guess it would be the west side of Payne Road has been taken out of the district, but nevertheless, those uses are, are there, and they, uh, to, to the most part, are consistent in terms of overall business and retail uses that are permitted in, in the Haggis Parkway. You have the, um, the, the, the ski, golf and ski warehouse across the street, a retail use. You have the new, I'm not exactly sure what the housing project is called, but it's Ben, ben mm -hmm. Devine's project, which is residential use but being run as a business. It's owned by a, a single developer and, and the apartments will be rented out um, as, a, as a business venture. And that too, I think, is subject to, a, actually I think that was subject to an amendment mm -hmm. to the contract zone agreement that I did for the project way back in 2004 or thereabouts. So we think this project is consistent in a, in a, in a general sense with the Haggis Parkway District and and with the comp plan because it is, of course, a retail business. Uh, the contract zone is needed, as I've said earlier, because of the limitations um, that exist in the ordinance on um, retail sales and services as not including automobile dealerships. There are m a number of factors that we think uh, uh, speak to the issue of, of uh, public interest and beneficial <coughs> effects. I've listed a total of 19 of them in my letter. Um, I've also, at the suggestion of, of the manager, incorporated them into the revised contract zone agreement. The one you have in front of you reflects changes from the initial draft that I submitted at the, at the joint meeting back in March of last year. So I won't run through all those. Adam may want to touch on a few of them. Uh, but they are now specifically incorporated into the agreement rather than just being talked about by us. Um, so if you approve the agreement, you are in effect finding that those uh, 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 items exist. The one specific one that is built into the agreement is this uh, welcoming sign. And Adam can talk a little bit more about that. Um, but that will be something that will end up at this, at this site, working with the town. There are, the other changes to the agreement were somewhat technical. Um, and I've, I've made technical changes, and you can read them and, and see what they say. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, happy to answer questions about the agreement, or I'll turn it over to Adam. Anybody have any? Just a procedural question. This is, a, this is the last time. It says first reading, but this would be the last time it's brought to us. Is that correct? Or we'll see it after the planning board? Yeah, there'll be a public hearing, and then yep. there'll be final reading okay. before right. you, before it goes back to planning board for final plan, uh, site plan approval. Okay. And we would expect, I mean, if the, the council has questions, changes, we're, you know, we're open to whatever you, you want to do within reason. Though. I, have, I have, did get input from Jay Chase and the town attorney um, 
at Sterwood Parkinson, I believe. Is that right? And um, I've incorporated his, his comments into the agreement. I have a process question. I, I'd heard uh, from a couple folks or uh, complaints about uh, the, how long it took and how long it's taken, the process. So could you speak to that a little bit and help us you know, understand what what you mean before the planning board? Uh, from the time that you started until you know we are where we are now. That's really all at planning board, and I'll let Adam and or Jim address that process. I've not been directly involved in, other than watching it on TV. I've not <laughs> been to those meetings, so I'll let Adam address Okay, thanks. So I, uh, actually, we sorry, Rick. Two, two, two quick questions for you. Yeah. Um, and this might be for Karen Martin, too. So in, in the first page of your letter, you, is there some history why in this zone is specifically, I mean, what was the rationale for excluding retail car sales? I mean, I mean, there must have been a rationale at that point in time. So I'd just be curious about that. Uh, I'm sorry to say this was, uh, that decision was made before my time, but I will make some assumptions from a planning point of view, and Jay can certainly um, chime in. I think one of the concerns about car dealerships has always been, you know, we didn't want to see um, a lot of car dealerships, you know, in a string. Um, no criticism to Sacco, but <laughs> I think we were looking exactly. for, um, I, I think the community was looking for alternatives. And uh, making car dealerships go through a contract zone process really give, gave the community some control over those uh, locations and spreading them out. It also gave them a little more control to do some uh, really uh, site work because car dealerships certainly have a lot of impervious cover and there are things that can happen within the context of the contract zone that perhaps go further um, or allow some more negotiation in terms of, of how that site looks. I'm not sure if Jay wants to add anything to that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'm from a planner's uh, perspective, having that ability to to have car dealerships as a contract zone um, certainly does give us more tools in terms of the development process. Okay, thank you. And then the other question I think for Rick is just I, in your list of 19, um, item number 15, and maybe it's a question for both of you. I mean, in the town, public meeting spaces are at a real premium. So 15 says you expect to make indoor and outsp or outdoor space available for public meetings. Can you talk a little bit about what you envision that being and how much square footage and that type of thing? Um, maybe a little bit more difficult to quantify than square footage. Um, we have opened our facilities, and again, we're in um, currently three different locations with similar um, yeah. pieces of land and uh, development. We've opened our facilities to charities and public space for tremendous amount of things. As a matter of fact, we'll share a, a video, if you haven't received it, you will, um, that will share with you some of the things that we've done. But we've opened the space for fundraising. We've opened the space for public awareness. We've opened the space for um, pet adoptions inside the showroom. Um, and some of you may have dogs that we've helped fund, uh, and cats. Uh, uh, we've opened the space uh, for somebody to raise almost $200,000 on our roof in Saco oh, yeah. for, yeah, for the last that. few years. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and we received a, uh, a CNN Heroes Award for that. Um, I think to backtrack a little bit, and I'm not here to blow our horn, but I will tell you the why for our organization um, drives the, the what and the how we do things. And our why is two words. It's to serve. So whatever you need, we have, we have um, on-premise in Saco alone um, had over 2,000 pints of blood donated. Um, we've had 300 pets adopted. <laughs> we've held so many different things. We are not in the no business unless it just doesn't make sense for us. We are in the yes business. And the, the, um, the market from Falmouth to Kittery has found us as a haven for a place to do things that other people say, no, I can't do that until I have. I can't do that unless you are. We're just in the yes business. So will there be a room in the, organ in the inside the dealership built to house public meetings? No. The showroom will house public meetings. Um, the uh, outdoor space will be used on hours 
um, on Sundays to do things, on Saturdays while we're open to do blood drives, to, um, to do an, any of a number of things. Um, but I, we find that being a part of this community, being a part of the community, is just such a pillar to who we are that um, we certainly have a history of and the ability to demonstrate the things that we've done, um, and we'll be happy to share those, uh, you know, those details with you at any time. <laughs> And you did mention a question earlier about trails. Um, I, I'm going to take this as just a moment to tell you maybe the reason that that piece of land is that piece of land. It is a very difficult piece of land. Um, it, is, uh, it has issues um, that are going to require additional expenses, et cetera. Um, the only thing I can tell you is that if we do get approved through the somewhat lengthy process that we've been through, that we will behave the way you would want your family to behave and will be a business that behaves the way you want your family to behave. Thank you. Anybody else? Answer fully? Um, so you answered, I had a question about 15, but you answered that for Councillor Hayes. On the 18, traffic pattern enhancement, enhancements associated with the project are anticipated to have significant benefit to the overall traffic flow within the area. Can you speak to that a little bit, what you mean by that? So as an, uh, and I'll, I'll let Jim talk about that a little bit because he's, um, he's paid more attention to the traffic studies that, and, and <laughs> the things that um, we think we're going to be required to do. Um, but we've also heard through the time here that Hagus, Hagus may change along the way, um, including in, uh, I guess it's on the public record, at the last um, planning meeting, the, one of the presenters before us, before us mentioned that there may be a roundabout going in there. So we have no idea, but what we know is that we are going to make sure that we don't present any difficulty, egress and, and, um, and, and departure from our property. Um, it'll be basically a right turn in property, um, and it's nice because we do have the two streets. Um, so public safety issues and the possibility of widening the road to create an entrance ramp to come in from uh, Higgins Parkway. But it will be right turn only out on Payne, uh, as recommended by, I don't know, just about everybody we've heard from. <laughs> if you want to. Okay. Every time Jim speaks, it costs me more money. I'm just <laughs> Here we go. Uh, um, the biggest uh, public improvement would be on Hygis itself. Uh, originally, we had the entrance located right here, and that was directly across the street from First Look Plaza. And one of the issues we had was the queuing of the traffic would have made the intersection backed up. So we've placed it back here, meet all the site plan requirements based on speed limit. Um, but one of the things that came back from Bill Bray, your town's consulting engineer, was right in this area here, was to provide benefit for the properties across the street with a shared turn lane, essentially, that will provide them northbound uh, a left turn into that facility right now, such that you'll have, uh, I believe, three, la three marked lines there now. So you'll be able to go left, straight, straight, right, and right uh, at that intersection to improve the uh, traffic intersection. So it's to widen those lanes and provide a little additional turning lane to benefit this as well not just our property, but to benefit this property on the other side. So that was one of the other public improvements. Um, the other one, as Adam had mentioned, is the, oops, is the right in, right out right here. Uh, that improvement um, was so that uh, any trips, trucks coming in with car carriers would not go and enter on Hygis. They would turn and go down Payne and be able to turn into this nice long stretch to get them off the road. Um, one of the complaints we deal with some automobile, automobile dealerships, no offense, uh, is that sometimes the car carriers have a difficulty getting into the site, you know, unloading and loading, and they sometimes do that in the public right of way. So we've designed this such that it will never have to occur. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Comments? Questions? <laughs> if I could Sir, absolutely. Just one, and, and I only say this just for clarity of public record. It, it was <coughs> mentioned at the planning board meeting by one of the other applicants that there was discussion about a roundabout on Higgins Parkway. That was the first that staff, the town engineer, the town planner had heard of it and Seco. So um, just so folks know, 
maybe it happens at some day, maybe it doesn't, but it was the first we had heard of it as well, and it was a statement by another applicant under a different scenario. Um, so I just wanted to be sure folks are clear on that. <laughs> uh, it, it's just speaking in our behalf that, um, you know, in, in the contract zone, um, Scarborough has made adjustments and, um, and allowed uh, both Mercedes, uh, Jaguar, Land Rover. Um, I will tell you that I, tonight was the first time I went by what is almost a completed Jaguar Land Rover. Um, it looks good. You may feel differently, but it, it looks and it fits um, with where it is. And we will, do, we will have the same quality, look, fit, finish, um, and again, sensitivity to, to where we are. But Acura being the third high line, so um, I, I don't think in any way you're creating a SACO or a, an auto mile in any way, shape, or form. Um, and we certainly think we are going to um, change the gateway to Scarborough. If the gateway to Scarborough um, we think is that exit um, when you're coming off the, the turnpike and you're going to be able to see a welcome to Scarborough um, sign. And again, we would love to construct it and control the cost, but we've been told we shouldn't. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody in the audience want to make public comment on the proposal? Seeing none, um, make a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any discussion, comments? Mm -hmm. uh, Council Reba? Yeah, just a quick comment. So um, I think this is uh, wonderful. Um, <clears throat> development um, along the parkway has been a challenge. Um, I think everyone always has good intentions about what they want. And, I, and what I remember, um, <coughs> having been on the council back when this occurred, um, was that um, Ms. Martin is absolutely correct. And you know, sorry to disparage our friends to the south in Saco, but it was the fact of not wanting an auto mile yeah. along the parkway. But it, there was also, you know, at that time, there was an influx of growth um, in the R&D sector, particularly you know, around Maine General, um, th them coming into what was formerly the I think it was Kmart at one point and even uh, Hannaford or Shop and Save. Um, and so there was a lot of attention trying to attract um, that type of business into that kind of area. So um, the market changes and we have to change in accordance to the demand that's out there. So I think this is a welcome, welcome design. Thank you. Any other comments, discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just procedurally aren't we supposed aren't you supposed to set the public hearing date or is that implicit in your vote uh, just so we know for scheduling purposes it would be at the next the yeah, that, that would be helpful. Typically, that, that language would be in the uh, motion. It was not included. I, I think I don't want to. It seemed implicit in the motion. That is the next step in the process. So but we for should plan to be back at the next March meeting 6th. for public hearing. So, just to be thorough, Mr. Chairman, perhaps it is best that the council okay. set the public hearing on this matter for March 6, 2019. Just to clear motion. To so I'll make a motion to set the uh, public hearing for March 6th. I, I second you. that. Any discussion? All those in favor? You know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is order number 19010, act on the annual season, seasonal row posting for weight restrictions if necessary from February 21, 2019 to May 30th. I don't know, Tom, whether that this is the Fair annual thing that it we, is. we it's all a, love to do. It's an annual rite of passage. It, this does, uh, it's, it's rooted in statute. It does allow the public works uh, director uh, to post the, the roads at his discretion. Um, I can say I'm not aware that he's ever posted all of them, uh, oh. but these are roads that uh, historically we are concerned about, given uh, you know, the the weight and weight and volume of traffic, particularly the weight. And so uh, this this authorizes him to close roads uh, at his discretion as the spring thaw is coming. Is there anyone in the audience that has any public comment that would like to come to speak on this item? Um, so exciting. Um, <laughs> I guess not. With that, a motion to approve? 
So moved. Second. Any discussion, comment? I would just also note that this is so well known in the development and construction community that right. this is not, a, that every town does these sorts of things. Uh, I know Public Works does uh, a lot of communications uh, mm -hmm. in advance of this and will make special allowances if we happen to have a frost on a, on a given night. They will often allow vehicles um, you know, until 10 a.m. the next morning or something like that. So uh, we do try to be very accommodating here. Have we ever posted room? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yep. You'll see the little yeah. little placard. There are standard placard <coughs> in the town. Uh, but again, we use it sparingly and only when needed. Yeah. It's a main thing. It's a rite of passage. <laughs> I think there was a motion. There was discussion. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is 19011. Absent request from David Hughes, Superintendent of the Scarborough Sanitary District, to appoint Paul Gigas to fill vacancy on the Board of Trustees created by the relocation of uh, Aubrey Strauss, Strauss um, to Brunswick with a term to expire 2019. Just by way of introduction, <laughs> curiously, um, in the event of a vacancy on the Scarborough Sanitary right. District Board of Trustees, there is no direct provision in their bylaws uh, as to <clears throat> how to deal with that. And so after consultation, um, I, I guess the town clerk through the town attorney um, this sort of situation, given the fact that there's no clarity or direct process otherwise, it's, it's up to the town council to make, um, to fill this vacancy um, for the remainder of the term. Is that That's correct? Correct, Jenny? Yes. <coughs> so, with that, is there any public comment from anybody? Um, motion to approve the request. So moved. Second. Any discussion, comment? Councilor Bayvon? So, um, so can you explain? Uh, uh, Explain, I guess, again, if you don't mind, because in the town charter, um, it does address vacancies for elected positions, and it sets, um, and I don't think it's specific to any particular, um, uh, except for the school board, because that's actually um, very specific uh, under a different statute. Um, why would we not follow what the charter says, which is basically if there's a vacancy within six, uh, six months of the next election versus it's greater than six months, you know, can you explain that? It's specifically for the town council and the board of education. It is specific. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, with that, any other comments? I have a council comment. Uh, obviously, reading the uh, the background of the individual, he seems extremely well qualified. The only thing I'd suggest is that uh, you know we're asking council to vote on the person. We shouldn't we at least see an application or a resume or something like that going forward, so we have you know some some information. That's all. Based upon what I've read, I didn't get a chance to, to speak to Mr. Hughes today, but uh, I know this doesn't fall into the purview of the appointments committee. But it just seems like a you know not a not a unreasonable request, and it was gracious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good suggestion. So that no further comments. All those that approve of the request. That's unanimous. Thank you. Um, there are item eight. There are no non-action items. Item nine is standing in special committee reports and liaison reports. And Council Hamill, I'll start on your end of the table, if that's okay. Uh, we're looking forward to the next appointments committee meeting. <laughs> that's about all it's, it's uh, and, uh, We can focus on budget stuff otherwise. And I'm uh, you know, just looking forward to the work ahead and uh, uh, more to report next time. Okay. Thank you. Council Katarina. Oh, I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, there's an ordinance meeting tomorrow night at um, whatever time. I can't remember. 4.30. 4.30, thank you. Um, and I missed senior advisory because of, I was sick, so I'm afraid I don't have anything. That's it. Thank you. Councilor Holden? Um, well, you're going to report on the Joint you Communications Committee yeah. um, from the school board and town council met um, to kind of talk about how they want to move forward with some quarterly sessions for um, engaging and soliciting public input on a variety of, po uh, of topics, nothing uh, to be set by you, uh, the public. So um, keep an eye out for those dates. They are already posted. Is that right, Councilor Johnson? Uh, yes. Thank March 26th is the first one from 6 to 8 here in Chambers. Excellent. So March 26th. Come on out. March 26th. We will have some water and snacks, and we'll have a nice little chat. Uh, and also, Conservation Commission met. Um, I have been um, 
and I will continue to reach back out and kind of um, see where folks are at. They are planning to move forward uh, with education and a proposal for a plastic bag ban, um, whereas originally they were talking about a fee um, per bag system. So I want to kind of see where folks are uh, thinking and feeling about that. And that's it for me. Thank you. Councilor Johnson. Uh, well, Councillor Foley has covered the Communication Committee. Uh, as far as liaison reports, uh, the Board of Education had a joint finance committee meeting, which I believe Councillor Babine was not there, but it was a productive meeting. I think it was basically to help uh, start the process of expectations is what I got out of it as I sat in the audience, um, or at the table, I should say. Um, and with that, that's all I have. So. Councillor Babine. Thank you. Um, for finance, I wanted to mention that on February 27th, um, next Wednesday at 5.30, we will have um, a joint finance committee meeting with the school board finance team, um, as well as uh, it will immediately roll into a town council uh, finance committee meeting as well. Um, so we will be here for a little while, and I believe that's all I have. Thank you. Um, the two report outs I have are for the shellfish in Coastal Harbor. The shellfish committee did meet. They've got new young leadership that has stepped up, and I'm glad to say they are really seriously working on surveys and really trying to figure out a way to be able to monitor the health of the clam flats, which is which is good, and to get us some information about some data and some other things. So that was great to see, um, and that was about all that I had to report out on that. Um, so I guess with that, Tom, a Tom Minutes sure. report? Just a, a couple quick things. Uh, I have no particular thing to report other than the fact that there are two matters that are kind of pending in front of the, the town council, <coughs> uh, that being the co-op sale or potential sale and uh, the Meadows, the Piper Shores proposal for a contract zone amendment. Um, council's provided direction kind of by consensus, if you will, and we continue to meet with, with parties. Nothing is materialized and advanced to the point to come back to you. Um, so. I think between council leadership and myself, as we progress through the, those processes, we'll report out those results, but there's really nothing to report at this point. Uh, public safety building, uh, things are really moving uh, very nicely. I had the occasion to be on site today. It's, I've been with my nose pressed to the conference room window uh, for months on end. It's finally nice to be on site and actually uh, see what they're doing. There's over 50 uh, tradesmen working on site as we speak. Um, mm -hmm. The big push now is to get the concrete footing work in place. The masons have assembled some temporary structures, and so the block walls will begin starting tomorrow. Um, I also would like to coordinate through council chair to uh, uh, get in front of the council, probably an executive session, to update you on the sale of the existing public safety building. We continue to have interest, but I've not brought uh, any of those conversations to the point that I can bring you a bona fide offer. But it's high time I update you on kind of. The, the, the road we've traveled over the last year plus in this regard and kind of what the prospects look uh, like going forward. So I'll work with council chair about uh, scheduling that with our broker. And that's it. Thank you. Next item is council member comments. Councilor Babine, you want to? Sure. Um, first, I wanted to uh, send out a congratulations to the Scarborough Boys Indoor Track Team for winning state championships oh, yeah. this uh, past weekend. Also wanted to uh, shout out to the uh, Scarborough Boys um, uh, the swimming teams, um, they did, um, uh, had a very good year as well, and have a couple of friends on that team. I um, wanted to also uh, mention we held, um, um, and I say, when I say we, I think I got to mention, um, so as a legislator, uh, we had held our first uh, legislative hours here at in Chambers. It's a, it's a round table kind of, or a round circle kind of approach to conversation about legislative issues that are affecting um, Scarborough residents. Um, we actually had a really good turnout. I think we probably had six or seven people um, arrived. Um, I learned all kinds of new things around Scarborough and who's related to whom. Um, it shocked me. Um, and what I joke about that is that I never knew that um, Susan Augulis, who was an esteemed member of our planning board, um, Senator Rebecca Millet, Millet is actually her daughter, and I just never knew that. So um, it's, you know, you learn everything, you know, coming to some of those meetings. Our next one is March 2nd. It's from 10 to 12 here in Chambers again. Um, and thanks to Toady and staff for uh, opening up the doors for us. Um, so um, when we did have um, a, a good turnout, so we appreciated that. And then last, I wanted to mention it, because uh, there's a lot of conversation and a lot of um, chatter, I guess is the best term, regarding school funding. 
and um, in the, in the governor's budget. And so I just wanted to give some context um, on that. While it is extremely optimistic, the fact that Scarborough, as a result of increased funding for education, um, is estimated to get an additional $620,000 in funding, uh, primarily as a result of uh, special, special educational uh, reimbursement. Um, I hope we're cautious. One is that um, it has, it's not an approval, um, and you never know what's going to happen. And what we've learned in the past is that even when there was promises of increased funding that goes into the formula, um, sometimes the formula itself ends up getting tinkered with, um, and then it just realigns or, or reallocates, and then we're back to square one. So I truly hope that we as a council um, take the conservative approach that we've taken in the past and really tried to look at what we need from a um, – uh, from a stable uh, basis um, with no additional increases um, or whatever nominal trends that we've seen in the past because this is a pretty substantial one that we haven't seen in a long, long time. So I hope we don't overreact as a result of that. I um, did also want to mention that, um, you know, in addition to um, that issue, there's been a lot of attention regarding main um, revenue sharing. Um, the governor's budget does not call for an increase in that sharing portion, which is a, um, to a lot of disappointment to a lot of municipalities and Maine Municipal Association members as well. Um, I believe it's about 2.5% in the first year, 3-something in the second. So there is a projection in the second year, but just not in the first year for our budget. So, um, you know, um, I'll try to keep everyone updated on what happens. Um, it's all about the supplemental budget, really, um, and where that kind of falls. So um, my door is always open to anyone who has questions legislatively or about the council. So thank you. Councilor Jones? I have none. <laughs> Councilor Foley? Um, yeah, just one thing. There's, we received an email earlier, um, and there were some comments made earlier uh, around, you know, why are we, why is it so late in the process to be talking mm -hmm. about goals and budgets? And I, I just have to, you know, reflect because I, what I've observed, and I'm a rookie still, I, I still consider myself a rookie um, going into my third year. Mm -hmm. uh, and because the, the learning curve is steep. And we know, you know, when you're elected, it's tough. I mean, we get called on uh, for, you know, executive sessions, extra meetings, goal setting workshops, all kinds of different things at various times. Um, and I just want to give Councillor or uh, Chairman Hayes a little bit of slack on that. And, and um, I've never seen it be so difficult and challenging to schedule our goals workshop um, as it has been this year. Um, and that's nobody's fault. It's not his fault, it's not our fault, it's the way life works sometimes. Um, so I, I just, I think it's never too late to talk about goals um, and try to get people <coughs> moving in the same direction. And even though the conversation tonight was, you know, a little challenging at times, I think we did get to, you know, somewhat of a consensus position. Not everyone's going to leave the, the room happy. Um, but I think that's, at the end of the day, what this work is all about. And so as we are entering this season, that's only going to get more challenging with conversations. Um, again, I would just ask everyone to be patient with each other and give each other the benefit of the doubt um, that the intentions are good. Because uh, I don't believe there's anyone sitting behind the table that isn't here to serve and do good things. So <coughs> thanks. That's all I have tonight. Councillor Kareem. Yes. Um, I went to the Project Grace fuel rally on Saturday, and I wasn't there very long because I was coming down with this cold. Uh, but, but when I left around 11.30, they had raised $10,000 by that point. I'm not sure what the final count is yet. I haven't seen. But that was really good. There were, I, there were a lot of people there. There was no place for me to park when I showed up. So um, I, I was pleased by the turnout with that. Um, <clears throat> just a... Uh, Excuse me, March 2nd, <clears throat> Engine 5 is going to be having a roast beef supper at the Lions Club. Um, <clears throat> and the reason I mention it is because yours truly and one of our local representatives, Chris Cayazzo, we're going to serve dinner. Nice. We're going to help serve. So please come support the uh, local fire department, uh, Engine 5. My husband was captain of it. My Grandfather-in-law was one of the founders of Engine 5, so I've always helped out with the dinners and whatnot. And um, the roast beefs are pretty good, too. And you can do takeout if you, if you don't want to eat there. So that's it. Uh, we kind of skipped over this uh, 
you know, uh, the workshops ahead of time. <coughs> uh, but with the review of the audited financials, you know, both sides of the house and, and having a clean bill, you know, is, this is no small accomplishment. So, you know, really, uh, and we can take a moment and thank Tom Hall and Ruth Porter and the finance uh, team on the municipal side and also their counterparts on the, on the Board of Ed side. I mean, this is a big accomplishment. Uh, we had some, you know, some issues that we made our way through. And I think the things we're dealing with now I know we wrestle with them and we you know, have a lot of uh, angst and anguish about it, but frankly, they're, they're golden-plated problems. So, and I think that uh, the biggest challenge is uh, you know, managing ourselves uh, and, uh, and helping to be cautious about expectations, which I think Councilor Babine did a nice job of articulating. So just, you know, you know we should, there should be high fives uh, with that news, and I think it kind of went by, yeah, you know, yeah. a slide or two in PowerPoint, but you know, it's a big no, deal. We're, we're, we're going to frame that letter. It's <laughs> going to be hanging. In the <laughs> <laughs> and, and I guess with that, I'll just, just a couple of closing comments. Also, absolutely, thank you, Councilman, for pointing that out. But that that is a huge achievement. I've I've mm -hmm. been on the other end of those reports about operations, and yeah, to get a clean bill of health is a, is a great feel and a great accomplishment. Um, then the only other thing I'd like to build on a little bit on what Councillor Foley said, but in a different way. We are entering, once again, the budget season. We all know that the budget, budget season is a real challenge for all of us. It's just people hold very strong opinions on all sides of the issue. Um, we've already gotten some emails before we even started the process. I mean, we've gotten <laughs> some emails, and we haven't even talked about a single number or produced a single budget. I just, to, to kind of build on Councillor Foley's, we, you know, I, I'd love us to give everybody else the benefit of uh, good intentions, and we need to find a way that we can have these conversations without it being as divisive as it has been in prior years. So I just appeal to everybody, pick up the phone, have conversations, make sure you communicate with everybody. We'd really like to do this in a different way this year. So I just appeal to everybody, have patience. It's not going to be a perfect science. And this year, in particular, in particular, is going to be really challenging for a bunch of issues that are going to be on the table. So we're just asking for a little bit of patience and communication. So with that, um, I don't have anything else to add. So I guess is it time to adjourn, everybody? Is there a motion to adjourn? No, we have 32 minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Oh, and I second it. <laughs> guess who we'll loses again tonight? <laughs> Thank you. I should have stuck with 814. <laughs> Thanks for pushing through that. Uh.